Hey guys, it's Aiden, and I want to go over how to make a riser type effect today. Now, just to preface this video, you don't actually have to design your own risers. In fact, I think it's fine to use samples for a lot of, you know, what you're trying to achieve with a riser. However, it can be cool to know how to make your own just so you can add a bit of extra flavor to your track, right? But what I don't want to do in this tutorial is show you how to make a specific sound. I'm going to be going over about seven principles that encompass how you can actually create a riser. So I got this little uh, trap thing. Now this is a preview of our breakthrough sound design course, which is just launched recently. I'll leave a link for that below so you can uh, register your interest there. This is one of the builds, which will show you how some of the sounds are made. Let me just play this section so you can hear what we're working with. So it sounds pretty cool already, but what I thought this could use is an extra little riser type effect, right? So I've added this extra little purple layer in here. I've just loaded up a serum patch and we want this um, MIDI clip here to beat where the riser is. So as for the note you draw in, it can be really any note because a lot of the sound of a riser comes from the pitch effects which we'll play with. And I'll get to those in a second. So I'm just gonna draw in a C3 for now and we're just gonna extend it for the whole length of this eight bar section. And let's just hear how that sounds. <laughs> Now, we could use the root note of this scale, which is F in this case. Uh, it doesn't really matter, as I said, because we're going to add a bunch of effects and uh, modulation to it, which is what I'll get into now. So the first thing to know with risers is, is, before we get into these steps, is that the sound source itself doesn't really matter as much as the actual movement of the sound. And what we're trying to achieve with a riser is we're trying to move it from this buildup of energy to a new section through a transition. Whatever we're trying to do is trying to increase energy. That's the purpose of a riser is to increase energy. So the first way we can do that uh, is whatever sound source we've selected, we can increase the pitch of it over time. Now, a simple way to do this would be to, for example, if you're in a synth like Serum, is to grab a macro and put it on the coarse pitch uh, or just use like the pitch bend of your synth, which is also a viable option. In this case, I'm gonna use a coarse pitch. And we're just going to configure this so I can move this macro here. And I'll just draw in a quick little sketch here and we can get the general movement we're after. Now that's probably too intense. Uh, and what a lot of producers do when they're creating rises for the first time is that it's actually too much of a pitch variation. So. Uh, what I could do is actually bring down the uh, the size of this macro. Let's do like, I don't know, 24 or something. And... So that's kind of the basis of the effect there, right? And you'll see, no matter if we change the sound source... You know, we get the same sound that we're after there with that rising pitch effect. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a linear relationship. You can play with, say, the automation curves in your host DAW. If you have a slow movement at the beginning, it does help if the note is tuned to your scale. If you're doing a more drastic sudden movement, it doesn't really matter as much, right? The second thing you can do in addition to this is use filtering. If you're not actually going to use pitch movement, although it does sound great when you use both, it's a great way to kind of get a similar pseudo effect because what you can do with the filter is you can emphasize certain frequencies as you move the cutoff filter up over time, giving it a similar kind of feeling like the sound is getting higher and higher and higher as it builds that energy, right? So I'm gonna use a uh, low pass filter. Oh, uh, actually, no, I think I might use a band pass filter because this is probably a great way to explain it. We'll use a band pass 24. We'll make sure that uh, our oscillator in Serum is going through it, which it already is. And we'll actually just map this macro to the same, uh, we'll use the same macro and we'll map it to the cutoff here. Now, what I'll do, because it's by default, if it's too low, you're not really gonna hear it. So I'll bring it about halfway by default. Uh, 
And as you can hear, it's kind of a bit of a subtle effect, so you might want to add up some drive to compensate, or maybe even bring this mix back a bit. <laughs> And I'm actually going to remove the um, curve from this here. I think it sounds nicer when it's a bit more linear in this case, although it's really dependent on how long your riser is and a bunch of other factors. Right. I just turn this down, but you get the point there. You can hear that it's a bit more muted and then towards the end. Cool. Let's drive that up a bit more because we do lose quite a bit of volume there. But you can hear that's kind of getting the effect we are after. I might even bring the mix back a little bit more. That way we're blending the filter emphasis with the original dry signal a bit, which is really cool. Awesome. So the third thing, well, third thing maybe, <laughs> is the volume increase. Uh, so this is a real simple way to just build up the energy from nowhere. When you start from somewhat close to silent, you kind of have the riser come out of somewhere like it's a uh, kind of hidden in the background and now it's kind of taking the forefront, which is a really cool effect. A simple way to do this is once again, just a macro on either the overall volume of your synth or just the oscillator. So I'm going to do just the volume of the oscillator. Now it doesn't have to be complete silent, so I'm going to actually give it a little bit of initial volume because a common misconception is that a riser has to start silent. That's not true. Sometimes it's nice if it starts a bit uh, you know, loud so you can actually hear it when it first comes in. So let's give this a listen here now. Now we'll bring it up in volume a bit because it's a bit quiet. You can hear it kind of just gets that extra volume boost at the end as it comes into the next section, which is really cool. And it layers up nicely with this other riser we've got here, which is pretty cool. Uh, the next thing here is the LFO increase number four. So what I mean by LFO increase is we can actually map an LFO to any of the three parameters I mentioned so far. So either the oscillator um, pitch, the filter cutoff or the volume or any other number of parameters. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a LFO on the course pitch, I think. We'll kind of get this cool. And it's just this cool kind of, uh, you know, uh, rhythmic effect. And we're kind of adding a bit more interest to the riser now. Because, you know, if we're making our own risers, we want to kind of make them our own and make them interesting. We can change the shape and the uh, rhythmic rate of the LFO as well to kind of match what we're going for. So we can make it faster. <laughs> Or we could even use an unsynced one and kind of speed it up over time. And once again, mapping it to this same macro. I find it helpful to use one macro for the riser because you kind of want everything to move in the same direction, if that makes sense. So let's see how this sounds. Yeah, that's perfect. That's kind of a bit intense, but I kind of like the effect it's giving there, right? Yeah, and that is already starting to become really interesting. Let's leave it on the unsynced one. I'm quite liking that as we head into the fifth thing, which is to add some space towards the end of the riser. Uh, when you create this kind of riser effect, it's kind of nice to have it echoing out after it ends. So you get this cool kind of desolate kind of, you know, like something's about to happen. You'll, you, you can hear the space ending, which is really cool. And simply doing this with a bit of reverb and maybe some delay is the best way normally. I tend to use the hall in Serum, although you could use a third party reverb. You could use the plate if you prefer that. The plate kind of sounds a bit metallic to me, so I kind of don't want that for this effect. Let's see how the default reverb sounds. I think the highs are a bit too intense for me. Maybe bring the decay down a bit. Maybe cut out the lows as well. Woo, 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 woo,
And what we can do is once again, bring the macro here onto the mix, just so it kind of gets more intense towards the end and at the end of the reverb or riser, should I say. We can hear that kind of effect there. Maybe let's increase the size and see how that sounds. Hmm, maybe a bit of a shorter size. You can get this cool effect by also automating the size, which is kind of like this shrinking of the room sound uh, or expanding of the room sound. Uh, in a lot of cases, it can sound a bit weird if you're not careful, so I'm not gonna do it here, but you can get creative and automate other reverb parameters to kind of move the sound in other ways too, uh, such as even the decay time, which is awesome. Uh, we could also add a bit of delay, might add a tiny bit and just bring the mix right down. I'm not going to actually automate this here. This is more just to give it a bit of general space. Let's add some ping pong so it's a bit stereo as well, just to add a bit of interest here. That's really subtle. But that's kind of just a cool way. And then what we can do is you notice there's a kind of a fill here. And this riser also ends right before this fill. We can also do the same thing here. Maybe even bringing the uh, macro end back to this spot here. So then we kind of get that ending as we like here. Great, and that's already sounding super sick. We're gonna dive into the sixth thing now, which is gonna be layering up this sound just to make it fuller and a bit more interesting. Now you can do this within the synth you're using like Serum, uh, adding in some noise, a second oscillator, etc. cetera. But um, in this case, we've also got a second riser layer, which kind of comes in. We're treating this existing one as another layer and they kind of both moving in the same direction, which is what we're trying to get with risers, right? Uh, it just kind of joins up and the sound kind of glues together. You can hear if I solo both these together. they're kind of getting the same effect. Now I could take this one step further by uh, adding similar effects to this one, etc. but I wanna actually do some more layering, even in just in the synth itself here. I wanna add a bit of noise into the signal path. So let's add this noise oscillator in and send it right through the filter. What I'm gonna do is select uh, from the analog noises in Serum here, the bright white is kind of the solid, nice high-end uh, white noise here. Let's see how that sounds simply just by doing that. All right, cool. Now there's a couple of problems here already because we are modulating the coarse pitch and the level volume on this oscillator. We're not getting the same effect. Now, of course we could just drag the same macro, the same LFO, et cetera. But what I wanna do is head into the matrix and just switch some of these macro mappings here to the global versions of the same thing. So instead of the coarse pitch of os just oscillator A, I'm gonna do the master tune. Filter cutoff can stay the same because they're both going through that. Instead of the volume of A, I'm going to send it to the global amp. And LFO1 can also go to the global master tune. Uh, macro1 controlling the LFO rate, that can stay the same. Same with the verb wet. And then let's just see how that sounds by changing those. So now we've kind of globalized the movements rather than just it being specific to oscillator A. Let's see how we're going. Now the, the we can match the volumes of oscillator A and B together as we want. I don't want a lot of noise, so just a little bit. Cool, uh, and then you can hear that other rides are coming in there. Sounds pretty nice. Let's just turn it off for a little bit. I don't know if the master or the master tuning, yeah, changes the noise uh, pitch as well. So we can actually add a bit of that here too. I'm gonna make it unipolar. Bring it down. Same with the LFO here. Make it this one bipolar. And I'm also just gonna add it a little bit to the filter cutoff here, just to emphasize it together a bit more. Mix it down a bit. And 
And that's sounding pretty good there, right? I, I quite like that. We could then go add a, another oscillator. Up the octave, for example. I'm kind of liking this one. Yeah, that sounds cool. Could add a bit of stereo width to this one, for example. Just to layer it up. But now we're getting a much denser, more interesting riser sound. You can easily go down the rabbit hole with layering. Um, you could layer up other sampled effects, other synthesized ones, just to kind of create your own interesting riser sounds from those combinations there. But this kind of leads me to the last one, which is going to be just to get creative. At this point, um, you can kind of just go nuts and do any sort of number of effects processing, modulating, whatever you want, bouncing it to audio, doing extra things, just to make this different and unique. For example, one thing that's coming to my mind is if I use Ableton's Erosion and kind of use this sine movement here and kind of bring it up over time, kind of adds this nice kind of crunchiness to the sound. I'm actually changing the volume of B there. That's my bad. I want to change the frequency here. I also want to add a second high pass filter just to kind of bring up the energy a bit more over time. We could then bounce it down to audio. Uh, let's do that. I'm going to freeze this. I'm just going to create a second track and drag this down on here. And we can just mute this one for a second. Consolidate that. We could add this cool beat swapping effect where we get like 1 16th and bring down the transient. Gives it a bit more rhythmicness. And then, you know, I might decide, hey, I actually want to keep this original one. I'm going to unfreeze it. Um, I'm actually going to turn off the oscillator A and B. Just kind of bring the mix up. I'm actually also going to um, reduce the amount of modulation from the LFO, just so it's a bit more subtle on this version. This is going to be like kind of a bit more of a noisy layer, if that makes sense. And then we can layer it up with the original. Just to give it a bit more background noise. And there we go. We've got a really cool, kind of cool effect there. The idea here is this is just one type of riser sound that you could theoretically make. Uh, you know, you could keep bouncing this to audio and resampling it and reprocessing it. Or you could make something completely different from, the scr the, from scratch from the ground up, uh, which is really fun. Uh, so I really want you to take away from this video that there's no one way to make riser, but I hope you have left with some principles with how you can make risers. Uh, these will apply to any genre. Make sure, you know, whether you're making, you know, chill hip hop or drum and bass or dubstep or trap or trance, whatever it is, you can make any kind of riser sound that suits the kind of track you're going for. Yeah, so I hope you guys got something out of this video. If there's any questions about the techniques I use in this video, as always, just leave a comment below. Make sure to share this with the producer buddy who wants to make risers so that they can understand just like you have. Great, guys. Uh, hope you like this one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.